All right, I'm going to talk about the hour of temptation in the Bible. So, a couple of years ago, I did a video on this, and all I did was speculate on what could be considered a possibility. So, let's get that one out of the way real quick. Um, so, the hour of temptation is found in Revelation 3, verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Alright, so let me first preface this, that the hour of temptation is the wrath of God that is to come. So when the hour of temptation is upon all the earth, those of us that are saved are lifted up in the air to be with the Lord Jesus. We are changed in the twinkling of an eye. We are changed from corruptible to incorruptible. And then when that happens, the unsaved are gathered at our feet and fire comes down from heaven and destroys them. We read here in Revelation 3, verse 9, the verse before. All right, so verse 10, we got the hour of temptation. Verse 9, it says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. <clears throat> not them, but you. You that are saved. Us that are saved, right? So, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. That means they are gathered together at our feet. All right, and that's exactly what we read in uh, Revelation 20, right? At the end of the thousand years, the devil or Satan, dragon, the old serpent is, is loosed, and he gathers together the, the unsaved at our feet. You see the parallel there? So when you start to connect the dots, all this stuff, it makes so much more sense. And you realize how simple it is. And it's just telling us basically the same thing in regards to the end of the world. It, it's, it just tells us the same thing in many different ways connect the dots and it's really just saying it's all saying the same thing so what is this hour of temptation uh, let's elaborate on that a little bit so that's you know put it simply it's the wrath of God to come so in this video here if I'm recalling correctly I speculate that uh, the hour, hour of temptation could be uh, this time when um, Jesus or no, I'm sorry. Let me collect my thoughts here. So, I speculated that it was a uh, possible UFO alien encounter. And, you know, the, all the media will present this idea that there is a place where there are aliens and that we should go there. All right. So, the hour of temptation is going to be this idea, you know, because people really do want desperately to believe in UFOs. They do, a lot of them. I mean, a lot as in probably close to 99% of everybody in the world desperately wants to believe in UFO aliens. And I, it might be higher than that, really. 99.9, .9, I don't know, but it's a lot. I mean, it's almost everybody. It's ridiculous. And there's no truth in it whatsoever. And <clears throat> I could get into why I think that is, but that, that's what that's what I see. In my experience, almost everybody believes in UFO aliens. So in this video, all I do is I speculate. And I, I preface it by saying I don't believe any of this. But let's just suppose for a second that there was a UFO alien encounter. And the hour of temptation is this alien encounter. And uh, so we go to like Matthew 24, and it says, uh, you know, if anybody says uh, 
He is there. What is that verse? If then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. So this would fit in that scenario that, hey, well, it's not Jesus Christ, but it's, you know, Marvin Martian Christ. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, the aliens came and they, you know, you get this new vaccine and it'll give you, it'll add 50 years to your life or whatever. You know, I don't know, some, something ridiculous. You can almost see that potential scenario playing out. I think if they could pull it off, they would. But they can't, so I don't believe they will. And they won't. But any any idea of an alien invasion or an alien encounter, I think is completely off the table. Because there's absolutely no way they could pull it off. They're not smart enough. And if there was any possibility that they could pull this off they would have to kill uh, you know probably uh, millions of people they would have to make it devastating absolutely devastating world not just a few people in a, in a big city but I mean a bunch of people to strike absolute fear into the rest of of the people that's the and I don't believe that's gonna happen there's no way I, I just don't think it, they I don't I just don't think it'll happen okay it's an interesting idea it's an interesting thought but there's no way. and so the reason why I say they, the in order to fake an alien encounter they're gonna have to kill a million people is because if you look at every other uh, without uh, mentioning specific events but you look at these events the majority of them that are are not true they either kill people or they instill absolute fear of death into people that's how you, you know like a kidnapper when when a kidnapper brainwashes their victim they're they have to uh, in, assert their authority and instill absolute fear into their victim and you know if if you kill a bunch of people uh, you know of course those that are alive are going to be in fear and believe whatever their captors tell them so that's you, you can almost see something like that happening but there's just no way that um, that the people in power are smart enough to be able to pull off something like that there's just no way they could do it I don't believe it at all but so the hour of temptation so I want to get that out of the way because I just speculated for half an hour on that possibility and I've prefaced it all by saying I don't believe anything that I'm gonna lay out here but so let's talk about the hour of temptation and I just I probably just laid it all out but I want to give some support to uh, what I just said so did I just did I do that already it's mentioned one time in Revelation 10 that's that specific phrase and so uh, first of all I want to go to Matthew 6 where uh, where Jesus says, uh, you know, you know, since I was a believer, this is what I memorized over and over. You know, Jesus says, uh, uh, when you pray, don't pray openly uh, out on the streets to be seen by men, but rather go in your closet and pray in secret or pray in private. And your Father, which sees everything in secret, shall reward thee openly. Right, and so when you pray, pray in this manner. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So lead us not into temptation. So where does temptation come from? It comes from the devil. So if we go, I mean, we see example after example of this. And uh, even Jesus was tempted. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And of course, then the devil, this indicates that the devil is the tempter. Right? So we go to uh, oops, Revelation 3. The hour of temptation is the devil tempting the whole world and when does that happen that happens at the end of the thousand years when the devil is loosed and he gathers together the unsaved people all right. just all you have to do is connect the dots and this stuff becomes so much easier to understand it's so simple and it might leave you scratching your head wondering why did I think this book of Revelation was impossible to understand and it's not all you have to do is put the pieces together connect the dots and it's amazing absolutely amazing how simple it can be but it takes patience it takes trust in God it takes faith and you'll be able to see it for yourself that all these things that were that we read about here in the book of Revelation it's essentially talking about the same thing and that is the end of the world the judgment day and the life to come hereafter it's incredible uh, the amount of wisdom knowledge that is given to us in the book of Revelation is amazing now of course there's a whole bunch of people out there trying to deceive you and presenting false ideas that are contrary to the book of Revelation and contrary to the entire Bible now remember there is nothing in the book of Revelation that contradicts anything else in the Bible and everything that uh, it's not a standalone prophecy Everything is supported by the rest of the Bible. And you could figure out all this stuff by reading and learning and knowing the rest of the Bible. Because this, um, whatever you want to call it, the end time and the world to come, the end of this world and the beginning of the new world, if you will, it's all throughout the Bible. It's the big event that's coming. It's what's been prophesied and put in, you know, it's a plan that's been put in place since the beginning. And that is the end of the world, the end of sin, the end of death. This has been what everything is leading up to, this great day of the Lord. And Revelation supports it all the way through. There's no my mystical sci-fi fantasy secondary world you know that so many people want to uh, pre, you know uh, want to uh, get you to believe I guess well they believe it themselves right and I, I think it comes from a lack of trust in the Word of God it comes from a lack of faith and if you just believe that these are the words of God because these are the words of God and you could put your 100% trust in the words of God in the King James Bible. It's as if God is sitting right next to you and talking to you. It's no different. And any lack of faith in that will lead to a lack of understanding. If you want true understanding you have to have true faith in the Word of God. It's always been about faith. All right, so is there? There's probably more, 
right? There's probably more I could. There's something in First John, uh, something or another, I think. No, not First John. What was that? What verse was that? There's one more verse I was going to share, but probably I uh, wasted too much time already. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth, tempteth he any man. So the hour of temptation has to be of the devil. right? And just like I pointed out, it's when the devil gathers together the unsaved. And we don't have to worry about it, because like it says in Revelation 3, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation. So we're not going to be a part of that hour of temptation. We're going to be up in the air with the Lord, with our Lord Jesus Christ, and the enemy is gathered at our feet. And again, you know, this this is all throughout the Bible, starting with Genesis 3, and taught, when God is talking to Satan and says that he, which is Jesus Christ, the seed shall bruise thy head. That's when we're up in the air with the Lord Jesus Christ and he stomps down on evil and destroys it forever. Right? And just like what we read many times, till I make thine enemy thy footstool. Right? This is all throughout the Bible consistent and nearly every single book of the Bible. Lead us not into temptation. I already covered that. And so I think that's good enough, right? For this cause when I go no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you, and our labor is in vain. So again, the, the tempter and uh, the temptation, uh, the temptations are of the devil and not of the Father. All right, and it, this is consistent all throughout the Bible. So God doesn't tempt us; the devil does for sure, and the enemies of God do, no question. Blessed is blessed is the man that endureth temptation. All right, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to them that love him, and the crown of life is everlasting life. Okay, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Oh, didn't I read that earlier? I'm sorry. All right, so I think I've gone on enough. I'll just end up repeating myself. But uh, it's it's interesting uh, because it's, it's uh, in my opinion, it, it helps to understand the end time scenario that we're facing, we're going up against, uh, if, look, if you could see how deceptive the world is and how people it just almost willingly, it seems like, refuse the truth. And what what is the truth and what the reality is that people are creating on television are polar opposites. It's incredible. And so... I want to help try to make that more clear and easier and simple for others to understand that the Bible is true and nearly everything you see in the world is false. Okay? That's long enough. Thank you.